We're going to watch a video real quick. And I just want to give you, if you have kids here, it's some heavy stuff, but it's worth talking about. We can't always hide from heavy stuff. So I hope that this will prompt some conversations in your home as you watch. My name is Kelly Bradford and I'm on the board of Alternatives Pregnancy Center. The first abortion I had was when I was 15 years old. I've had at least five experiences with abortion that I can remember. I wasn't a believer and I didn't have anybody around me who would stop me from that step, who would explain that this is life, this is a baby. A close friend of mine that I grew up with and she was raised in a Christian household, just like me. Her parents and family had told her that if you ever found yourself pregnant, uh, that you'd be kicked out of the house and not supported. And so when she did find herself in an unplanned pregnancy at 18, uh, she was very scared because of the comments that were made and she didn't want to be alone and isolated. I had convinced myself that what I was doing was um, the right thing for me. Deep down inside, I knew that I was making the wrong decision. And I was scared, and my body was rejecting it, actually. I was forcing myself to go through with it, but I thought that I was making the right choice for myself, and sadly, that's not true. Someone I'm very close to uh, had an abortion experience when uh, we were both younger. I found out a few years later that she had gone through not just one abortion, but two. When I started suspecting I was pregnant, um, I took a test, and of course I was. I just wanted it to go away. Not only had I dismissed it, but it had obviously been so traumatic um, that I had completely blocked it, completely blocked it from memory and chosen to do that. All those years that I had buried it, how in the world I could have been so used by God and so in love with God and walking so closely with God in every other area. And that just shows how beautiful our God is. <sighs> that he, he used me anyway. And there's no sin too, too great that he doesn't cover with his grace. After going through abortion recovery, I um, found freedom in um, my identity in Christ. I needed prayer, I needed help, I needed somebody to hold my hand and um, pray for me when I just didn't even know what to pray for. And it's such a beautiful picture of how he can just bring us up from the ashes. I've never been the same um, since I came to Alternatives and took a tour and really found out what God is doing through the ministry, through everybody that's there. As much as you feel alone um, in your thoughts, um, and maybe even by, by what other people have said around you, that you aren't and that you have support around you, you have love and you have people that care about you deeply and want the best for you. I understood in a deep part of me that I was accepted, not for anything I had done. I am a medical assistant and a patient advocate at Alternatives Pregnancy Center. We not only care for her unborn baby, but we care about her life and we care about her soul and, and her life matters because God created it. I'm nurse manager at Alternatives Pregnancy Center. I feel good because all bad what happened in my life now serves for good. And this is how God works. I am the patient services manager at Alternatives. I just want to let every woman know uh, who has had an abortion in her past that there is hope. But I will tell you that your life will not be completely full until you have brought it to the surface and let Jesus heal you.
contact Alternatives Pregnancy Center and come in and get that help. You will find love, you will find acceptance, you will find total non-judgment from women who have been there um, that will love you through that experience. Church. Uh, it's a powerful message, a powerful video. Um, before we get into conversation with the ladies up here, I'd like you to get your Bibles out, would you please, and turn to 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. We'll open the Word of God. If you're visiting with us for the first time, um, this, is, this is what fuels us, is the wisdom of God as it's revealed in His Word. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, a little bit later. For those of you, if this is your first time, this is what we call Behold Sunday. And it's a little different. We take a, a rest from the regular sermon series. We'll kick that back up next Sunday. But we pause and behold the goodness of God. Um, and the reason why we use the word behold is because the Bible uses a lot. And let's face it, it's different than the word look. When you look at something, you see something. But when you behold something, you absorb it, you take it in, you, you contemplate that. And what we want to behold is the grace of Jesus Christ, his mercy and his forgiveness. And so I hope and pray that whatever is said, whatever is sung, whatever is prayed, that you receive that, you receive the mercy and forgiveness of Jesus Christ. Uh, the book of 1 Peter, it's actually a letter that, that Peter wrote to a church that basically had been rejected by their culture. They'd been minimized, they'd been marginalized. Many of them have lost their businesses, their families. Some have lost their lives. And they're wondering if the culture is rejecting us, maybe Jesus is too. Maybe God has rejected us because after all, good things happen to good people. And bad things are happening to us so we must not be getting this thing right. And Peter is writing a letter to these people to encourage them to tell them, yes, this is what the culture says you are, but this is what God Almighty says who you are. And it's a powerful, powerful passage. It begins at verse nine. It should come up on the wall if you don't have your Bible open. But Peter writes this in verse nine. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You are a chosen race. The church at this time was made up of black people, white people, everything in between. Rich people, poor people, free people, slave people. All kinds, of the, the, the entire demographic of that society was met and, and Peter is saying, you were once this. You, you once belonged here to these people. Now you belong to a whole new group of people and he describes it as a royal priesthood. That doesn't really resonate a whole lot with us because we think of priesthood, we think of a Roman Catholic priest wearing the collar and that's what they are. But what Peter was wanting the people to go back to was this Old Testament version of what a priest was. And he's saying to these Christians, you're that. You are a priest. Did you ever think of yourself that way? Maybe you've said, well, I'm no priest. If you're in Christ, you're a priest. You are. That's who you are. In the Old Testament, a priest had four basic functions. I'm just going to go quickly through these because we want to get to the conversation. But it's very, very important. The first thing that a priest was supposed to do is put God on display. To make God visible to the surrounding people, certainly to the surrounding nations. The people of God were to look different. And so we've instituted a dress code here at Arcade Church. And I was going to say, I'm really proud of you, honey, for sporting the pink shirt. I am, um, you've never worn pink before. I think he deserves uh -huh. a round of applause. She's a lot nicer up here than when she says, you're going to wear this. I, I'm told that's how I feel. So anyway, you know, so we, we put God on display. We as believers in Jesus Christ are to look different. 
I'm not talking about what we wear, but, but there's something about us that is different than mainstream culture. But then a second thing that a priest was is to help the people to their salvation. To help, pe- to assist people in moving towards a connection with God through blood atonement. That's the Old Testament version. For us, it's connection with God through Jesus Christ, through the blood shed on his cross. That's our role as priests is to look different. We are to help people towards their salvation. But then also we're to intercede on behalf of others. We stand in the gap and we speak to God on behalf of others, but then we also speak to others on behalf of God. We're we're talking to God, Lord God, please bring them to yourself. And then we're talking to people, you need to come to Christ. And so we're this interceders that we, the intercessors that that we minister to people in that way. Then the fourth way is to help those in need. We are to help those, that's what a priest would do in the Old Testament. That's what we as priests are to do now. We are to help those who are in need. A couple of weeks ago, I used the illustration that we as believers are to have these special forces night vision goggles. And the night vision goggles for special forces to help them see people in the dark. Help them really see enemies in the dark. For believers in Jesus Christ, because we are priests, We are called upon to have these spirit-born night vision goggles that we do not see enemies in the dark. We see people, image bearers in the dark. We see people in the dark that no one else sees. We see people in the dark that society has rejected, that society has marginalized, that society renders invisible. We are the people who see them. That's a priestly role. This is one of the reasons why um, Debbie and I and Arcade Church, we are so excited to partner with APC, Alternative Pregnancy Center. And that's why Heidi, we have Heidi Maskey with us. Would you please give her an Arcade welcome? Thank you. Thank you. We've known Heidi, I mean, we've known, we've known you like 10 years. Yeah, you guys are dear, dear yeah. friends. And um, Still, Arcade's yeah. family, yeah, it's, I feel like yeah. I'm at home with yeah. you guys. Yeah. I yeah. just appreciate you guys so much. Yeah. Well, Heidi is the executive director of Alternative Pregnancy Center. She is also the wife of Andy, who is the lead pastor at Sun River Church, a uh, church that we planted 40 years ago. Yep. I think you guys have been there about 40 years, haven't 41 you? 41 years. 40, yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> it feels We're like that. We're going to die in the pew, too. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One of the things, Heidi, the reason why I wanted to use this 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10 passage is I look at APC as a priestly role in the Sacramento Basin. You, you tick off all the boxes of what a priest is to do. You, you, you make God visible, you care for people, you intercede for people, and you help them towards the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the purpose of having this conversation today is really for us, because it's been a while since you've been here on the platform, and we, it, it's been a busy year for APC. It's been a busy year for pro-life causes, Can you just take a few minutes and kind of break that down for us a little bit of what's going on with you, APC, as well as the pro-life movement? Yeah, so again, I just want to say thank you. Thank you so Mm -hmm. much because where Alternatives Pregnancy Center is now, eight years later from when I started, Debbie being on the board, um, we're a completely different organization and God has just done miracle (laughs) after miracle and just testifying before God's people of what he has done is such a privilege for me. Yes, we've been through quite a year. Um, We've had a clinic flood as you have prayed us through. uh, Three moves uh, in one year, the overturning of Roe, and many of you prayed as God led Mm -hmm. me back to Washington, D.C. to be on the Senate floor for the first conversation on the topic of abortion in 50 years. And I have to tell you, um, as I just laid myself before the Lord, uh, like Lord, there's no way I want to do this. Many of you know me. Um, being on the in the political arena is not my heart. Um, it is it is a vicious, vicious arena. And I just want to show the love of Jesus Christ as our staff help women in unplanned pregnancy situations choose life, and that those who have chose abortion um, help them be redeemed mm-hmm. through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's why we exist. But yet God has over and over again called me to these political platforms. And just one quick story, it was incredible when I 
looked on my phone and saw U.S. government Senate on my phone as it was ringing, and I thought, okay, do I pick this up? <laughs> So picked it up and it was like, hello, my name is so-and-so from Senator Grassley's office. You've been referred to us by Alliance Defending Freedom. We want you in Washington, D.C. next Tuesday. Oh, by the way, we need your oral and written statements by Saturday. You have to pay for your whole trip. Can you come? And uh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and so I tell you what, I, um, there are those moments in our lives where um, when God calls us to take up our cross and follow him wherever he leads, um, those are scary places to go. And I had been warned by so many people, no matter what you do, they're going to twist your words. They're going to, um, if you have any demons in your closet, they're coming out. Um, it's a good thing that um, I, they found my Pinterest list, my Pinterest board. <laughs> Um, and so they just tried to prep me for that. And Andy reached out to a dear friend of ours uh, in Washington, D.C. and said, hey, Heidi's going to be in, in D.C. on Tuesday. Can you counsel her? And some of the most incredible advice, um, he said, not only will I counsel her, but I'm going to walk with you through this entire process. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, Heidi, but there's one thing that I need you to do as you prepare to be on that Senate floor. He said, I need you to get face down before the Lord, and I need you to confess every sin that's in your heart. If you have hatred towards the pro-life community or pro-choice community, I need you to confess that. If you are fearful about standing before government officials, I need you to confess that. Um, because when you walk in that Senate hearing room and you sit down and you bring that mic towards you, whatever is in your heart is going to come out mm. of your mouth. Uh, profound, profound words. And I will tell you the day before the Senate hearing, as many of you were praying for me, um, after a five-hour drill session with ADF, just preparing for, preparing you for any question that could potentially come at you, um, I walked into um, dinner at 9 o'clock at night, and I was introduced to Senator Einoff. And he's this tall, slender man, probably in his late 80s. And he looked down at me, and he said, Young lady, are you afraid for tomorrow? Yes, sir, I am. <laughs> And he grabbed my face and he kind of brought it up to him. And he goes, do you know why you don't need to be afraid? He said, tomorrow when you walk in that Senate hearing, you're going to be sitting next to the head abortionist from Planned Parenthood. You're going to be sitting next to the professor of law at Berkeley. You're going to be sitting to a, next to a lieutenant governor and a lawyer. But when you walk in that room, you are the daughter of the king of kings and the lord of lords. And he is going to anoint your lips. So, Yeah. It was uh, an absolute profound, profound um, time, and, and God has used it. What's so crazy is walking away from that, there wasn't a, a single um, se section, really, that they could use against me, and that's only yeah. by God's glory. So That's yeah. great. That's good. I want to comment on something, talking specifically about alternatives and my experiences with it. The thing that drew me, I think I've said this multiple times here at Arcade, to our uh, alternatives is you touched on it. the gospel thread is through it. You're not just about let's save babies and that's good enough. It really is from the time a woman comes in to the clinic to contemplate uh, saving the baby or having an abortion, the gospel is there. To when they're going, they choose life and they get prenatal care, the gospel is there. Or you have a great ministry to women who have already had an abortion and are trying to reconcile mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what they've done and can I be forgiven? The gospel is there. And that is why I love, I love Alternatives Pregnancy mm -hmm. Center because mm -hmm. the gospel is yeah. all the way through it. Yeah, and you know, it's... I've, I've gotten a little bit of a, a flack from different pregnancy centers throughout the country just on how um, central the gospel is to our ministry. But at the end of the day, when a woman walks out of our clinic, um, as I've said multiple times before, the words, you are pregnant, are the most powerful words a woman will hear in her life other than will you marry me. And when a woman walks out of the clinic um, and she does not have the support of her significant other, of her family, and of her friends, um, Jesus Christ 
Christ will be there for her. He is her protector and her provider, and we believe above everything else in introducing her to her Savior in the midst of that most difficult um, appointment is absolutely vital. And last year, we've said this all the time. We've said, you know, we a lot of there's a lot of not great nonprofits out there who say they're gospel centered, and we spent all of last year really story after story putting together women. What does that look like? in the clinic, though, as women walk out. And so um, if you go to uh, our YouTube channel, because we're not showing it today, um, there's a whole compilation of of videos about women who have accepted Christ Mm -hmm. and how that impacted their life in the middle of that Mm -hmm. appointment. Mm -hmm. Before we move on, I I forgot to mention earlier, um, we are doing an offering for APC and there are a couple of different ways that you can give. If, uh, if for like for us, we're going to do a hard copy check. We're old people. We're old people. So uh, <laughs> we, we're doing our, but make it out to APC. And there's some boxes in the back. Well, I'll mention a couple of different times in the course of this service. But then also, if you want to do it electronically, you can do that by texting uh, 41444, and then just type in. Uh, Baby bands. Baby bands. Baby bands, yeah. And then that can guide you to giving online. But uh, we have always had uh, a very generous spirit here at Arcade Church for APC, and we want to continue that because you receive zero government friend- funding. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. Zero government funding. And for those of you that may be new to what is this Alternatives Pregnancy Center, um, there's a slide coming up. Um, basically, it is our mission to provide free medical care um, and alternatives to abortion with the hope of Jesus Christ. And about four years ago, we kind of abandoned this old pregnancy center model of just offering pregnancy tests and ultrasound, and God gave us this new vision of what it would look like to offer all the services that Planned Parenthood offers minus abortion for free and with the gospel attached. And um, so that is what we started doing four years ago. In in a matter of six weeks, God provided us with all the medical personnel to make that um, happen as well as a half a million dollars. And um, we now have just moved into a, a brand new 7,000 square foot Um, clinic and trying to get that medically licensed, and that is a huge prayer request right now as Mm -hmm. we go through the inspections. Mm -hmm. So that is who we are, fully medical. You're midway through the inspections, right? And so you're, you're very, very close. To moving in. Yeah, so we're still operating out of our 1111 Howe Avenue. Um, the admin team has been moved to the new building, and we have a series of two different um, inspections. One is Oshpod, the other is California Department of Public Health, which doesn't necessarily take kindly to who we are. Yeah. So, um, so just be praying about that. And if you're a medical personnel in the audience right now, maybe you're a nurse, doctor, phlebotomist, OB, um, um, medical assistant, um, We are always in need, especially now that we're going to be able to triple our patient capacity in the coming year. We're always in need of that. Well, aside from the facility move-in, what does the future look like if you had a crystal ball, which you don't, but we have a sovereign God, which is far better than a crystal ball? Amen. (laughs) what, What does the future look like for APC, do you think? Well, really, it's what does the future look like here in California? Because as many of you know, um, the topic surrounding pro-life, pro-choice is um, uh, 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 we're in a crazy culture. And, you know, when God gave me this, this vision of what it looks like, like Joshua and Caleb, to enter that promised land and reclaim that land for life, as you mentioned with the scripture, it doesn't come without war, Mm -hmm. Um, spiritual warfare. um, It doesn't come without a lot of hard work and a lot of opposition. And that is really the culture that we're in right now, yet we already know who has won the battle, and yet we have a lot of hard work to do, and that's what God has called us to do at Alternatives. But um, here in California, many of you may know, in January 18, um, abortion laws passed, one of which is um, AB 2223, which legalizes infanticide, and uh, that is what we're up against right now. Okay, so. just, just pause for a moment, because if all of our information is from the mainstream news sources, this is news to us. Mm-hmm. And so say it again, maybe slower, mm-hmm. that this is happening in our state. Go ahead. 
Yeah, so it's really important that you are educated on the reality of what's happening because it is not talked about. And there are two types of abortions. There's surgical abortion today and there's chemical abortion. Surgical abortion is just like it sounds. You go into a doctor's office, there's a doctor and a nurse. They do an ultrasound to determine how far along you are. Um, basically, you have pain medication, you're numb from the waist down or you're put out if it's second or third trimester abortions, which happen here in California. Um, and then uh, you go into a waiting room and you're given instructions on how to take care of yourself as you leave. Um, however, chemical abortion is the abortion of choice today. It's called the RU486 pill. It's a series of two different pills and it's different than the morning after pill. And it's really important that everybody understands that. Um, and so basically what happens is the first series of, well, everything's changed since COVID, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so prior to COVID, prior to 2020, uh, a young woman would have to go into a doctor's office office if she had an ultrasound that determined if she was 10 weeks and less in her pregnancy, she could be offered the abortion pill because it's very dangerous beyond 10 weeks. Um, so they did an ultrasound to determine how far along she was, 10 weeks and less. She would take the first series of pills in the doctor's office um, and then go home and told to take a second series of pills when she gets home uh, 48 hours later. The first series of pills causes the starvation process. It blocks the baby's body's ability to absorb progesterone, which is what a baby needs to sustain a viable, healthy pregnancy. And then while a woman is home, um, and oftentimes in a bathroom isolated all by herself, after the starvation process has ended, a woman will take a second series of pills. And the second series of pills causes that woman to go into labor. Um, and these young women testify over and over again to the fact that you know, they're going into labor on the floor, uh, on the toilet, in the shower, um, and seeing everything. There's no doctor there. There's no, and this is what I said at the Senate hearing, because there's this, this um, guys out there that um, that says, you know, th this is health care. You know, the mm -hmm. abortion pill is health care. Let me tell you what. What these women testify to is they are isolated in a bathroom all by themselves. There's no doctor there. There's no nurse there. There's no pain medication. They're physically seeing everything that's coming out of them. Um, and, and the devastation that happens as a result of that. Um, that, is, that is not health care. That is not love. Um, and, and not only that, they're not educated on what to expect after that. So what happened in, during the Biden administration uh, 2020, April of 2021, the Biden administration released what's called REMS protocol, which is a protective protocol on this drug, which means now anyone can gain access to the abortion pill by mail with no oversight from a doctor. Again, you and I understand that a baby 10 weeks and less that is delivered on a floor, um, most likely well, definitely not. That baby will not survive. But um, when a woman, a young woman receives access to this abortion pill and she's well into her 30 week of pregnancy, um, basically what has happened is um, a woman will gain access to that drug, no oversight from a doctor, um, and a 30 week old um, uh, baby is born on the floor, and unfortunately, in those moments, a uh, 30-week-old has a chance to survive as viable outside of the womb. And so AB 2223 was passed because what is hospitals going to do when a young woman goes into the hospital at 30 weeks, delivers a living baby, um, and doesn't want it? So there has to be a law put in place to protect hospitals, as well as to protect young women who deliver deliver a 30 plus week old baby on the floor. And, um, and that baby is basically born alive and does not want it mm -hmm. resuscitated. Mm -hmm. So when you say, is this really happening? I can say, unfortunately it is. Mm -hmm. um, as I was at our, our Sanctity of Human Life event this um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I had several um, paramedics, uh, fire department um, men come up to me and say, wow, 
it's just as you described. Um, I had no idea what this was. I need more information from you. We are getting call after call after call mm. of one, uh, showing up where a baby is on the floor blue and, um, and the woman does not want anything done. And so that is the reality. Uh, I'll turn, or, uh, Planned Parenthood will no longer need to be doing um, abortions the way that they used to do them. You no longer legally have to basically rip apart a baby in a womb. You now can just induce labor and babies can now be born alive and are the product uh, uh, or are the um, owned by the abortion clinic and then sold for um, harvesting of body parts. So that's the reality of the culture that we live in today. It's a dark, dark world, absolutely. And um, this is one of the reasons why I love the priestly ministry mm -hmm. of churches like Sun River, Arcade Church, APC, uh, interceding on behalf of people, people who have no voice. Mm -hmm. And many times that, that is always the unborn, but it's also the young mom as well. Well, and I, I think what we forget, a, a key role that alternatives plays is, um, I am not saying women are dumb, but there are women who don't understand. Absolutely. And you have the wonderful opportunity to have conversations of truth, which is, I would say, missing um, for so many young women to understand the choice that they're making, understand that there are amazing options. And then, of course, because I'm pounding that drum, the gospel comes in right alongside that yeah. in the hope of yeah. Jesus. And I, I can't thank you enough, Craig, and your leadership here to have this conversation because um, there are many pastors who will not allow this conversation to take place and people want to pigeonhole it in a corner and say it's a political conversation. It has no uh, room in our churches. And unfortunately, that couldn't be further from the truth. Um, when pastors refuse to talk about the most politically and emotionally charged issue that is that is plaguing the church today, when they refuse to talk about it, um, their sheep are left to the culture and the voice of the culture, which will always, always, always lead to death. Yeah. And um, pastors like you who are willing to rise up and allow your voice to be heard, not just um, to educating uh, your congregation, but just what does God's word say on this issue? I mean, uh, we are called, Proverbs says, to rescue those who are being led to slaughter, hold mm -hmm. back those who are stumbling to death. Um, and uh, you are definitely actively, as we partner together, allowing us to do that. So, so how, can, how can people, if they want to know a little bit more or find out how to get involved or maybe see your clinic, I mean, how yeah. can anyone here um, well, first off, um, cue the social media um, slide. Uh, we have some social media that you can follow us on as well. Uh, you can get on our mailing list. Um, and then if uh, I encourage everybody here, don't just take my word for it. Come for a tour. Come mm -hmm. see it for yourself. And uh, we are now doing tours. Our address is 8689 Folsom Boulevard. We're located in between Watt and Howe right there on Folsom Boulevard. God has planted us in an incredible, incredible location. Mm -hmm. So I always tell people, start with a tour. Come down and see it for yourself. See what God has done because it's pretty incredible. Anyone I've ever encouraged to go take a tour always comes back with their mouth hanging open yeah. because the, yeah. the depth and breadth of your ministry you have to see it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The pregnancy center word, you know, when somebody says, oh, you're a crisis pregnancy center. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> No, we're way more than that. <laughs> yeah, we're way more, way more. Well, Heidi, uh, we love the Matsky household. We love APC and we are so glad that you're with us. We want to have just a moment of of prayer over you uh, because it is a fight and you've been called to fight not in the way that the world fights, uh, but rather it's a spiritual battle. And so we wanna come side by side with you. And so I'm gonna ask if you are a, an elder, former elder, and you, uh, would you please come on up with your spouse, staff members of RK Church, if you would come up as well, if you want to. I mean, we'd love to just have a, a prayer of dedication for Heidi and for APC. So any former elders and spouses, current elders and spouses, uh, staff, if you would come on up, we wanna have a, a word of prayer, okay? 
Can I just add one more thing? Yes. Um, you know, this is an absolutely sensitive subject, and, and now the statistics are, are one in three um, in child-rearing ages will face um, abortion. Um, and everything that we communicate surrounding this topic of abortion must be in love. Um, the foundation of the conversations, and I have to check my heart continually on this, it must be love because otherwise we are a resounding noise. And so um, if you have any questions about anything regarding the organization, um, please feel free to check, check us okay. out at the back. Hold your hand out, please, towards Heidi. Almighty God, we, we recognize that it's very easy for us to trust in the means and methods of this world to fight. And you have called us to a higher calling. One that looks like washing feet. One that looks like blessing and loving enemies. One that looks like us doing the dying. And so Father, we, we thank you that you have given us these marching orders because without you and your wisdom, without Jesus, our Savior, we would be fighting this the way everyone else does. Out yelling, out social mediating, out protesting, out doing whatever the opposition is doing. But Father, we, we recognize as your people that you have called us to a different kind of fight, a fight that we may not be able to see and yet the victims are right in front of us. Lord God, we need the power of Almighty God to protect and to bring transformation to children, to women, to young men, to young families through APC. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you bring these people in as you adopt them through the death of your son, that they, you accept them, you bring them in through redemption that's provided by Jesus. Lord Jesus, I pray that you continue to give the mind of Christ to Heidi and her staff as they see fellow image bearers in the unborn and this mother that's going through incredible turmoil. And I pray that these people see Jesus, his kindness, his love, his power. Holy Spirit, I pray in Jesus' name that you infuse APC with energy that can only be explained from above, that you infuse them with great power and great wisdom that can only be explained as the goodness of God. Amen. Would you please do that, Lord God, in your Son's holy and precious name. And Father, we know APC, we know Heidi well enough, and you know us. We will continually give you the glory, all the praise, because it is your work, and we thank you that you're using us as your vessels. Continue to remind us what it means to die to ourselves, to take up our cross and follow you. We pray these things in your Son's holy and precious name, Jesus our Savior. And everyone said, amen, amen. 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 Thank I, you. I, thank you thank so you. much. Let's give her a hand, you guys. We're, we're going to change activities here, but we're not changing topics. We have been talking about being priests and how we intercede for others and how we look visible and how we help people towards redemption. And the whole reason why we can be that and do that is because of what's been done for us. And that is Jesus Christ, him crucified, buried and risen. You saw that sermon five different ways in the baptism. That was a sermon. You've, think about it, you've already heard five sermons today. And you saw them. You saw the death, the burial, the resurrection that's been done for us. But then Jesus gives us this very strange activity so that we never forget. It, it's a really a meal. We say this before, but it's, it's a meal that doesn't fill our bellies. It fills our souls. It fills the room with this awareness that we are a new people. 
that have been purchased, do you realize that because of Jesus, we are blood relatives? We are related by blood, the blood of Christ. And one of the ways we do that is through communion, these elements. And so for those of you that might be newer here, you've never experienced this in a moment, Chris is just gonna lead us in a beautiful song. Feel free to sing along with that. But as that music is being played, uh, there are stations throughout the auditorium where you can get the elements and there'll be someone there saying to you, looking you in the eye, this is the body and blood of Christ for you. The body and blood of Christ for you. Say it with me. The body and blood of Christ for you. And then if you can just go back to your seat and wait because we wanna take these elements together as a family But also look around, there might be someone that's not able to make their way to an aisle or a table, offer to get the elements for them if they want, and that can be able to help them as well. Let's open first of all with a a word of prayer and then Pastor Chris, you can go ahead and start. Father, what a wonderful day. You have allowed us to see the baptisms of Matthew and Kira, Eli, Ali and Narat. Father, what a blessing these people have already been to us. I pray, Lord God, that you will bless them specifically today because they have indicated to us that they are with us, that they're a part of us, and that is so exciting. I pray that your hand is upon them today with power and grace and reassurance. But then, Father, as we file by and as we see these elements, may our mind wander to that hill outside Jerusalem 2,000 years ago where our Lord, our Master, Son of God, God in the flesh, hung suspended between heaven and earth, unclaimed by both, being cast out so that we can be brought in. We thank you, Lord God, for this gift. May our minds wander to you in this moment. Amen. Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears.
as the body of Christ, if you could take off that top where the bread is at. On the very night that Jesus was betrayed, just hours before he was betrayed, he took some bread, he broke it, something that had been done every year during the disciples' life. And then he said, this bread is my body which is for you, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat together as the body of Christ. In the same way, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's drink together as the body of Christ. Heavenly Father, when the disciples first heard those words of Jesus, they had no clue as to what was about to happen. There would be a kangaroo court, torture, whipping, crucifixion, death, grief, fear, panic. And all of that was for us. Jesus was cast out so that we could be brought in. Jesus hung condemned so that we could be declared innocent of sin. Jesus was rejected so that we could be brought into the family. We praise you for what you have done for us. And so please accept. We want, we want to praise you a thousand ways and then a thousand more. We don't ever want to stop. Forgive us, Lord God, when we forget. Forgive us when the cares of this world seem to move what you have done to us and for us to the margins. May we rise up each day proclaiming the goodness of God to our children, our grandchildren, our neighbors, our co-workers. May you call us to be priests in this world. We praise you, we thank you. In your son's holy and precious name, Jesus. And everyone said, amen. amen. Let's stand together and sing one more song, okay?
guidance and encouragement grants you to live in harmony with one another. That together with one voice, you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you. And we all say together, for the glory of God, love you. Have a great week of worship. Thanks for watching. Find out more about the Arcade Church community at arcadechurch.com.